chance to be rude to Hey kid, don't ever let them get inside your head They'll tell you what to do in life instead Of everything you know that you could get Don't let them guide your life towards regret I'll fight for what I love with every breath My past is filled with things I won't forget I use them all to push me to my bed Hello guys and welcome back to another tutorial video Basically what we're going to be doing in this video is we're going to be building the farm that's behind me It's a very easy beginner farm if you have very few materials uh, Basically it produces both whatever crop you plant inside and honey and honeycomb uh, Basically what I have and I'll show it you quickly is all the stuff in here that this produces so right now i have pla carrots planted in there and basically what it does is um what it does is in here uh, you got the beehives there and the bees produce honey but in order to get to get the pollination they fly across the field and they pollinate on these flowers and then what will happen is when one of them do it they pollinate on the flowers and you see how he's got the pollen on his back and as it goes across what happens is that stuff drips all over the field and every now and then you have a chance that it basically does what bone meal does and it bone meals the plant that you just saw right there uh, and and over there and basically what it does it gives it an extra state and when that happens uh, it makes the crop farm work a lot faster as you can see the farmer crops his inventory is full of carrots i made sure his inventory is full and then what we have is we have a hopper minecart that goes underground and collects everything and these are the things that this this farm the way that i've got it built now produces it produces carrots bow meal honeycomb and honey bottles so over here as you can see i got two chests at the top these are full of shears for honeycomb and these are full of bottles for honey as you can see with the hoppers, I've got the split right there. Uh, so basically all of these ones are producing honey bottles. And then these one, these four over here are producing honeycomb. Basically the hoppers come down at the bottom as you can see. And they come into this chest. Which basically it holds it. But I have the chest over a hopper minecart right there. So the hopper minecart picks it up. But that way then you've got an additional storage if you need to you you don't have to have this go over there you can have a separate storage for this stuff uh it's just how i've set it up for the tutorial uh obviously you've got the redstone in order to get the signal in order to tell the dispensers when to fire what they need to fire so what i'm going to do is we're going to get into this uh i'm going to grab a piece of land and then i'm going to give you the materials list uh bear it in mind when i show you the materials list uh they some things we do change as we go along um we will change it as we go along we will alter it and stuff as we see like in the materials list i don't have the extra in for this side but what i found out is baby bees if you have baby bees in any of the hives they can fit through this gap so i just added these blocks just to prevent that from happening on both sides but in the tutorial materials it's not in there uh but anyway i will go and get ready and i will have a plot of land and we will get to building this hybrid farm okay guys so welcome back uh so we've got the farm over here we're going to build this farm over here uh so for the materials it's actually uh not hard like i can pull it up Nope. I know it's one of these buttons. That's not it. It's going to placement configure. There we go. Material list. So this is the list of materials you're going to need. Uh, some of these you will need. Some of these, like mud bricks, is just a building block. You can use any building block. It does not have to be mud bricks. I just like the look of mud bricks. Uh, glass doesn't have to be glass i'd suggest it because the glass is for the outside 
uh, and it just helps light inside the farm, so it's nice, but you don't have to do it. Um, but I will put, you can pause the video right on this, and you can get whatever you need from this. Like, this is literally all the stuff pretty much we're going to need. We can make modifications later. Uh, as we're going on, but I'll show you the basics of the farm and then I can show you the modifications we can do with the farm But this is just so you can get the the stuff that we're going to need for, in order to get the farm to work Okay, so once you've got all the materials together that you need uh, first of all, we're going to start with the uh, With the digging out so we need to decide so I would get it like a temporary block uh, decide where your center is going to be. So this is going to be the center. And then one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And then basically what we want to do is want to dig out four blocks on each side of that cobble block. It's just like this. We're going to take it all out. We'll be putting it back in afterwards so don't get rid of your dirt. You're going to need it afterwards to put it back in. There we go. So, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Oh, I need an extra layer off of this side. So, basically, you should end up with something like that. Then you want to take it down again. So, just like this, just take all of this dirt off. And you also want to take the block underneath that center block. If you want, you can move the center block down and then just get rid of that so you have an idea of where the center is going to be. And then what you want to do is you want to grab a block that's not dirt. Because Endermen, in a world, Endermen can actually remove dirt. So basically what you want to do is you want to replace this block with a non-griefable layer. It can be anything as long as Endermen can't take it because the last thing you want to do is create a little bit of space that an Enderman can fit into and they steal one of your blocks and then it takes you a while to figure out what's wrong and then you got to fix it and so it's just better just to replace this with a block that can't be touched by Enderman. So usually what I do is tell people, especially when you're doing redstone, you want to keep away from dirt because the last thing you want is one of your... Um, blocks to get removed and then you're spending an hour hours trying to figure out what's wrong with it or because an enemy removed block block because it doesn't matter even if redstone's placed on it they can still remove it so once you've got this now what we're going to do is whichever side is the front of the farm it there's no rule on which direction it has to be but whichever side is the front so i'm going to make this the front like it is over there i'm going to take these two blocks away like that and then I'm going to replace this over here now the reason for this is sometimes as you can see over there I have the flowers at the front row but sometimes when the farmers harvesting the crops can fall onto that row and not get picked up by the hopper minecart this will prevent that so even if it does fall there the hopper minecart can still get it so what we want to do now is we want to get some rails you want both powered rails and you want both normal rails. Basically, what we're going to do is... Oh, and we also need redstone. You don't have to use a redstone block. You can use a lever underneath it. It doesn't matter. Uh, I just find it easier just to use a redstone block. So basically, what we're going to do is go like this. Obviously, powered rails can't turn, so you have to use a normal rail for that. And then what we're going to do is going to go up here and I'm going to replace this row with, I'm going to replace this row with that. And then what we're going to do is, there we go. I try to get the turns out of the way because you, these are usually the more complicated part is making sure the turns because it doesn't connect to any other rail. So basically what we're going to do is going to run up this side. And then right here, you're going to have the turn. And then it comes down 
and then it goes up, turn, comes back down again, uh, and then goes back up, turn, does the same thing again, goes back up, and then we're going to go back up here, we're going to turn here, oh, that's always why you got to be careful because sometimes especially when you come to like an end like this it tries to connect up when it shouldn't be trying to connect up so then we go like that oh no that's the wrong rail powered rails okay so now we've got this part done uh basically what we're going to do is on top of this center you're going to grab some stairs. doesn't matter what kind of stairs they are. They just need to be stairs. It can be any of these. It really doesn't matter. So place them right there. That now is your center. The dirt that you've taken out, you're going to backfill in now. You're going to backfill it all in. So like the ends right here, I just put something unique down that I'm not going to use in the build. That way then I don't get confused. But then you do all of this and then you grab a water bucket. You put a water bucket in here and then grab a composter. And then put a composter on top of the water and then glowstone you don't have to use glowstone like i said in my when i did the villager farm you can use any light source so you can have sea lanterns you can have frog lights you can have um, shroom lights you can even have a piece of wood with four torches on either side there's no rule on what it has to be so just so we have an idea of how big this is so we're going to come out for on all sides just so we can see Bear in mind, you will have replaced some of the dirt here, so it'll still look like dirt. And then we can just close it up. You may mess this up a little bit, so don't need to go too mad on it. The whole point of the idea is just so we get the size, the sizing to make sure that we don't plant anything incorrectly. But it's fine, because as long as you get your hoe, it's easy to fix. Okay. So this is basically the fundamentals of the farm. So what we're going to do is across this back row, we will put a solid block here. And let's get some hoppers. What we're going to do is we're going to come across with the hoppers. Like that. Now... When doing this, like it's easier for me to put bees into a farm than it is for you guys. Uh, but basically what you want to do, waiting for this bee to move. So I'm just going to grab a copy of that. Now there should be bees in this. Now, when you're dealing with bees, because when you're breeding them in order to put them in here. Let me just knock this out. So when you're breeding bees and you've usually got two hives in and you breed the bees where you can, stuff like that. So the bees will usually be like here-ish. And obviously if you have a, a trap door, like I would put a trap door like right here. Now, when you put the hive in, usually bees inside the hive will come out. Uh, I'm not sure if there's any bees in this hive. I don't have anything. But when you put a trap door on the top like this, bees can fly in, but cannot fly out. So if you're trying to close them off, let me just put, uh, just to see if exact, if you, if there is any bees in there. No, because the B would slash time set night. 
So like all bees now should be trying to go back to the hives. If there's a hive available, they'll go back. So see how that bee went in? It went in. And then that bee shouldn't be doing anything. So that bee can't go in because this, this hive is now full. Uh, but now that hive is exact is full. So even now, when I switch it to daytime, so you saw how the bees went in. But now when I switch it, time, set, day. All the bees over there came out, but none came out here. This trap door being at the top blocks them from being able to get out. It doesn't matter whether it's like that or like that. As long as this trapdoor is there, they can't leave. They can enter the hive, but they can't exit the hive. So now if I break this, I believe it drops, yes. So now this is dropping now with three bees in there. Now, usually what my suggestion would be is when doing this, especially when you're dealing with live bees, is boom, boom. And then what you want to do is you want to get on top here. You want to break these two and then place one right there. Then once you've got that one there, you just come across all the rest. Just like this, just straight across. And then it locks them in. Now, when I place these hives in, these bees don't leave. They can't leave because of the trap doors. So they sit there. Like if I do this, they're straight out. But by placing them here, uh, kill at, oops, kill at E, uh, brackets, uh, type, equals E and then close bracket out kill all bees that are outside of the hive so any of the bees were outside the hive will now be dead but anyone's inside the hives will be fine so basically now we're going to go back to building so basically what you want to do is put, put a solid block right behind these needs to be a solid block and then we're going to put a block here and then one right here. And then we're going to come up one right there. And put a solid block across here. Now, what we're going to do. So we can close these. Oh, I went halfway. I went the wrong way on most of these. But oh well. So what you want to do is you want to put a solid temporary. You want to put a temporary block on all of these. You don't need to do it like that. You can do it like right. You can just come across like that. So you want to get a dispenser. And it has to be a dispenser, not a dropper. And then what we're going to do is we're going to place them facing downwards. So they should be facing towards the beehive. Like right there. Okay. Now we can open these if you want. And you can get rid of these blocks now. Whatever temporary blocks you put there, you can get rid of them. Doesn't really matter which directions these are, but you can move them around if that's what you want. Uh, now, what we're going to do is we're going to stick a solid block right here. And then we're going to get comparator. Comparators are very important because comparators take signals from a lot of things. Anything that changes, anything that has a changeable state i.e. chest, beehives, um, redstone, redstone, redstone ore, because it submits a signal, anything that has anything that changes or can sense something. Uh, daylight sensors. Uh, so then what we want to do now is we want to get some redstone dust. The redstone on these things are not complicated. You want to come across there with a bit of redstone dust. All the way across here. Now what we were, now that we've done this down here, we're going to extend this solid block over one. 
and then we can put redstone dust all the way across these two things. So we're going to go all the way across with redstone dust. And then um, we want to put a glass. And it has to be glass. There cannot be anything else. Don't put slabs. Don't do anything. It has to be glass. And then what we can do, if you see here, this line is actually never broken from down there to there to up here. And then we go across this glass put in the redstone. And what happens is it doesn't break the connection. When a hive is full, it will output a signal of five. What that means is when a hive is full, you have a hive here. Oops. You have, let's put a comparator. We will put a comparator on it. Basically, a signal outpost of five basically means one, two, three, four, five. It will, when this is full, it will light up all of this. But if I put one here, it won't light up this. So basically that's what it does. And that's why we have to build the design, uh, this thing basically like this, because it has to be one, two, three, four, five. Once it powers this block here, it will power uh, these dispensers here. And you don't need to worry about them being touching like this because it only outputs a signal of five. So this would be a straight line and it would be five, but it would need to output six in order to power this one, which you can't do. So you don't have to worry about because they're touching, oh, well, they may misfire another one. And even if it does misfire anything, which it wouldn't, uh, it would just get thrown into the hopper down below and go into your chest and then you can just collect it again. So basically now we can get rid of this and you can get a chest for te a temperature. You can get a chest depending on what you want to do with this later on. It's completely up to you. But you can just place a chest. Uh, now, over here I have dual, so it basically collects both honeycomb and honey bottles as well. So I'm going to set it up for that system. However, you can just choose to have one or the other. Uh, all it would do is mean you would have to change the way that you do the hoppers. So these first hoppers automatically first of all go down. Because that's what's feeding the individual dispensers. Now what I did was I took this one down and this one down. And then what I do is I come across. On both sides. If you want all of them to be one thing, you can do it just like this. And then they will all produce that one that one thing that you want. But I like them when they're one, one, two, three, four. So I like it when, so I have the mixer because this is, if this, if you've only got a trap, the ability to have one, at least you can have one that produces both. You can always, once you've got the honeycomb, you can always make up another one to do the honey bottles. If you just want this one to produce honeycomb and then you because you need the honeycomb in order to make the the hives down the bottom there so then once that is done uh what you want to do is you want to place a chest oh, place a chest like this and then come to this side oh oh i forgot to reset these hoppers hey so and then you place a chest on this side basically like this and now what this is now is you can get your bottles and your shears if you have an iron farm shears are not expensive to make easy to use and then you just if you load up this chest it will slowly filter out and load up the system and if you filter up these bottles The only thing is, the one thing you need to make sure of when you're doing this is before you start the farm or allow the farm to work, these bottles all have at least a few in other slots. It doesn't, you don't have to fill it up. I understand getting so many bottles is hard, but you can literally just go like this just to make sure that there's a few 
doesn't have to be 100%. Like, if you can just get a few uh, in each one, you can let it na fill up naturally. But my suggestion would be is to go around first, just grab a few, and then just slowly put them in like that. And then as you're collecting more bottles later on, because the problem is if one of these dispensers triggers, if one of these dispensers triggers and there's an empty slot in here, it can pull the item back so you can get honey bottles mixed in here. Which is never a good thing because it clogs up the farm. Uh, it clogs up the farm, not to mention you'll end up getting 16 wasted honey bottles just sitting in here because it's, this is not so easy to get to once the farm is built. Which is why we've got all of this stuff to transport all of these bottles in. And you just keep filling up the bottles as it's needed. Uh, you're probably going to need a few for a while, but once you've filled it up once, you're probably not going to need to fill it up again for a while. Um, but all these dispensers are full, but obviously she is an unstackable, so it's fairly, it's a lot easier. Once this farm is full for the first time, you are not going to need to refill it for a very long time. Uh, you've got more chance of running out of bottles before you run out of shares. Uh, so once this is done, the B section of this thing is pretty much good to go. So what we're going to do now, and you want to remember, we want to remember that this is right here. So what I'll do is I'll get rid of that. So usually what I do is I make a nice little perimeter just around the edge here. Oh, I don't want to do that. I need that. Uh, so... That way then you know what the space you're working with. You can't be griefed by mobs. Just a nice little edge just right around the edge here. Then you've got your farmland and you've got a nice little edge to show how far your farm's coming out. And then what I would do is I would get some glass and I would come up to because it has to be at least too tall however you want to make it look is up to you you may use cobblestone at first uh, if you if you're if you don't have much glass you can always make these solid blocks you did they they show they give you no benefit whether they're glass or solid um, and then you basically just go through like this. Um, once this is done, you can then, before you put on the roof, I would always suggest, uh, bring in your villager. Even if you stick him in a boat, but as long as there's no way for him to get out, he immediately takes the trade and now he walks around. Uh, grab. Any flower you want, it just needs to be, just don't make it too tall. Just make it single high, because otherwise the, they get caught. So basically, I usually do that. And then what I would normally do is you can plant any crop you want in here. It can be carrots, it can be potatoes, it can be wheat, anything you want. Sometimes when I build these, when I build this farm, what I do is I actually mix it. So I have one that produces carrots, one that produces wheat, one that produces, um, one that produces uh, potatoes, uh, one that produces beetroot, because it all works exactly the same. But you've got to plant the field the first time yourself. In order to get faster results from this, in order for this to farm to work properly, the villagers' inventory has to be full. So usually what my suggestion is, especially before you put the hop-up minecart in, is just try and harvest as many carrots as you can. If you have a fortune hoe, you get benefits from that. And then problem is once you put the hop-up minecart in, it's very difficult to understand what he's taking or what the hop-up minecart is taking. So I always suggest doing it before the hop-up minecart is in place. Once he's not taking any more, there's a good chance his inventory is full. Now, I summoned him in. Uh, there is a chance that his inventory could have another crop in it. Unfortunately, there's no way for me to open up his inventory and check. 
uh, he has carrots and bread. So it's unlikely because his inventory probably has carrots and bread. So as you can see, he's not taking any more. So I'm just going to take the rest of these out. And you could take what you can do whatever you want with them. And then once that's done, what you can do is you can go ahead. So the way that I did it is I have these and then what i did was put uh, a, a rim around it now this can be any block you want it can be a solid block it can be glass if you want uh just whoop i was shift clicking probably i wasn't so basically all i do is i go around this and i do that you can even come across this section if you want to as well. If you want to try and cover people from being able to see the dispensers, you can, you're can. more than welcome to do that. Uh, then you get some glass. And what I do is I set the glass up because I specifically set it up to try and get an AFK spot because these farms are always good when you're AFKing them. Now, I'm not specifically not bone meal in this farm to try and give you guys somewhat of an idea of what the farm itself actually produces i also don't want to turn it on until everything's pretty much ready to go i usually once i've enclosed this you can turn on the bees at this point and they can start producing so you can start getting some materials as you're going obviously i'm in creative i don't exactly need the materials so i'm going to do this all and then what i'll do is i'll finish the video with an afk session so you can actually see how much uh, stuff this farm has actually produced so what you're going to do is we're going to take out this block and this block. So you want to get a normal rail and put it there. You want to get a powered rail, put it here. What we're going to do is we're going to get a redstone block and put it right here. Now my suggestion is right here. I made this mistake, but is to replace that. And redstone is untouchable. And then put a mud block here. Put a redstone here. Redstone here. And let's bring you up. And then boom. So basically what we do is bring the redstone up and out. This will now bring the minecart all the way out. Now what we want to do. Let me just reset my inventory. What we want to do is we want to build this section over here. Now. That's all the stuff we need. What this is, is it basically is an unloading system. So if you bring this up, bring this up. No, that's too steep. Bring this up. Uh, basically, you bring this up like this. And then what we want to do is want to then bring it down. The reason why we're doing this is so this needs to be a thing. So the reason why these are not going to be, so this is going to be a normal rail, normal rail, and a normal rail. These two rails here, this is where your chest is going to be. Chest is going to be right there, and then you're going to have a hopper. Hopper is going to point in here, and then this one is going to point into that one. There's a very important reason why that is, and I will explain it to you in a minute. Um... So once you've done these two, what you're going to do is you're going to stick a couple of pearled rails here. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to replace this. I'm going to take a comparator output from this. That means now if there's an item inside, when an item goes into this thing, it gets a signal. As I explained to you over when we were doing the B section, comparators are very useful for getting signals from things, especially things that have changing states. Uh... We're going to go straight into a block now. So when this comes on, it will power this block. And then, oh, I didn't grab the torch. I'm going to grab a redstone torch. Now, when this is on, this is going to power this block, which will turn off this redstone torch. So as you can see, powered on, redstone torch off. Take it out, on. Uh, so once this is done you can place a block above this take a repeater and plug it into there 
and then you can put a block if you shift click and click on the comparator you can place a block on top of it and now as you can see this rail is on but if i stick something in there this rail now gets turned off it's a good way of building a loading system uh let me get a hopper minecart So it goes in, it goes in, and if there's anything for it to collect. So just to show you guys, I'm going to leave a stack of chests here. You should collect them on the way back up. There's no bees or anything, so the farm's not buzzing buzzing yet. So we've got to wait for the bees and stuff to pull it out fast to pollinate. But see, as it's there, as it's unloading this system, it turns off. Now, it's very important... These hoppers have to go, the hopper that takes the signal has to go sideways because if you point straight down, the items travel out, especially when there's only one or two items, so fast that the hopper, by the time that the um, comparator grabs the signal to send, to turn off the torch, the hopper's already left. The hopper minecart's already left. So it, it really doesn't work as bad if you do it straight down so always point the hopper that the signal's coming out of to the side and then what i do just to make sure because i usually put a double hopper system here is i point this one into that one so this was the one the signal's coming out of so all the stuff even in this hopper has to flow through that one once this is done the farm is pretty much set this is pretty much the basics of the actual farm so what you can do is you can safely figure out you can safely do this if you grab a couple of pieces of glass in your inventory just replace them as soon as you're in now we're going to break as you can see as soon as i'm breaking just be very careful not to hit any of them because they all will get mad at you it'll be kind of hard when you get to the last one you hit one and then they all get mad at you they all sting you and then they die and then you've got to breed them all over again nothing is more <laughs> nothing more outraging than that especially when you put all that hard work in and then just fill it up as you go out now at first you will look at it and go like oh that's a lot of bees and it is you don't need this many bees you can be fine with having like one or two bees in each individual uh farm however the more bees you have the more efficient that part of the farm will be uh it will be more buzzing in the beginning but after a while they will start staggering when they leave uh just first things in the mornings there may be a lot of them so basically what we do is if you look at the back now as soon as the bees start to produce uh once they go in the hive with and they start to produce you will see i'm waiting for one of them to actually do it uh, basically, when the honey, when the thing starts to produce honey, it, you will see the lights start to light up to say that it's getting a signal. But it just needs a few back and forth in order to happen. But basically, what will happen is you'll see these lights here start to light up. These are basically saying that it's getting a signal. And you can see the length. So this one here is on phase one. This one here is on phase one, two, three this one here is just in between phase two uh there's three phases there's one two and three when this last line is lit up that would be three um so what will happen is gotta wait for them to go in and out they keep going in and out of the hive uh, it will not happen right away the farm always takes time to prime once it does prime it will start what it will once it does prime it will work really fast but as you can see, the crowds have started growing already. Which means they've been pollinated. As you can see, they're pollinating. They're flying over the field. They're dropping their stuff. And it's and it's working. So, my suggestion would always be... Uh, you can't do anything here. But if you've got a chance of having baby bees in here... What you need to do is you need to block off the sides here. And the reason for that is because babies can actually fit between the hoppers. 
Uh, oh, there we go. There's, there's, there's some of the lights on now. So a lot of these now have entered the phase one category. Um, so basically what you want to do, and what I'll do is I'll grab slab. Uh, sorry, I keep, I, you may find weird, like I, like I'm muting and stuff. It's because for some reason I have a cough today. I don't know why before recording, I was absolutely fine. Now I, now I've all of a sudden got a cough. So let's grab some stairs instead of slabs. Like I say, it really doesn't matter what stairs you use. Like nothing has to be set up blocks. And then you just do that. That way, then it just means if you've got a baby bee, they can't fly through like the corners of the hoppers to get out. Now, if you are getting to the point where you want all of your drops to go to the one location over here, it is fine. There's just a simple modification. What you need to do is we need to go down to the track. You want to see where the track is. Okay. And what we can do is a slight modification to the farm. So the track should end. It ends right there. It ends on the other side of here. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a slight modification. Where when it ends here, instead of it ending there, what we're going to do is we're going to grab a normal rail and we're going to grab powered rail. And what we're going to do is grab some redstone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just come down. Uh, make sure, obviously, when you do this, you replace these blocks to get rid of the dirt. Just like this, all the way across. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down with the powered rails. And we will use this for the corners. And then you come down here and then replace this one here with a, and then you put that there. And then what we'll do is you'll grab the chest and you'll move the chest over here instead. So we'll get this out. And then what we're going to do is going to grab the hopper. Well, we're going to grab the hopper and we're going to come up like that. What this will do is it will put the chest over where the hopper minecart will go. And if you want to, you can build a mini loader. You don't need to because it can usually keep up pretty well. Uh, but if you feel that you're more comfortable with the mini loader, then you can. I will actually show you how to put a little mini loader in for it. So basically what we want to do is we want to get a powered rail. We want to get rid of that redstone block. Put in one of these this is only if you want this you don't need this so what we're going to do is we're going to take the comparator signal out of this so what we need is a small block right uh let me grab that we need a block right there with a comparator Actually, we'll put it right here because this should take this will take the signal from the chest. Put it right there. Signal. Okay. Then we what we want to do is we're going to put a solid block right there so the her man can't can bounce. Okay. Once you've done this, if there's items inside this chest, it will be on. So what we want to do now is we want to. Redstone torch. We put. Uh, how do I power that block? Uh, if I come out one more, repeater. Let me stick a repeater into this block. And. Put a redstone, put a block right here, the redstone that powers that, which then powers that block. Then what I want to do is you want to put a step down. Uh, 
Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to come down. So you have to be careful when you're designing something like this. You have to create um, signals, uh, signals and strength. So if you want it to work with one item, so even if there's one item in there, it will actually stop the minecart. What you want to do is you want to put this down here. Oh no, we gotta go up one level with this. Right about that. So. See how this is now a signal? Take this up a level. And then move the redstone there. And put a repeater there. And this will now work even if there's one item in there. Because this will always give a, a, a level of 15. So now if I come across here like this. Uh... Literally take the redstone dust all the way across. That will shut that off. Now, one thing you've got to remember with this is we've got to separate the tracks. So there has to be a separation here in order for this to work properly. Because otherwise what will happen is when there's an item in there, it will stop the minecart and the minecart will stop over here. So usually what I would do is I will put in a redstone block. Uh, put in a redstone block over here. Oh, that's not a redstone block. That's a redstone block. And then a powered rail on that. That way then it still will work. And then it sits under it. It collects it. And once it's collected it, it will go. And then it will just keep traveling back and forth like that. You don't have to put the loader in. Because as long as you keep on top of it, it will keep pretty well. Hey. But as you can see, all the stuff, all the stuff from there. That was the chest I accidentally dropped. Uh, all of this stuff will go through and then it will all collect in this one system. Hi guys and welcome back. So as you saw in the last time lapse, uh, we've we've basically AFK'd. I was going to do an hour, but I decided just to do like half hour instead. Uh, so we're going to go and take a look at how many drops we have. So I'm just going to take these out so they don't get filtered with the others. So in about half an hour, I've gotten two. Two stacks and one. 
Karas have gotten one, two, three, four, five stacks, just over five stacks. Now, bearing in mind, this is for half an hour. Uh, honeycomb, I've gotten uh, a stack and a half. I'm actually surprised there's no bone meal. Sometimes there is bone meal, but it's not a reliable source from this thing. So I will basically put a, a thing on the screen that basically says what the total uh, hourly, what I would declare the hourly um, efficiency is on this farm. But as you saw during the time lapse, I had to come over here and modify the redstone. Basically, I was powering this block, which was blocking this hopper. Very silly of me. Um, so basically, all I did was move it down to so its powering the bottom block that the rail sitting on instead, and not this block up here. So hence why I've got no block here. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much what all I changed over here, which now stops it, which means it can go through here. Um, and that's pretty much it for this tutorial. If you've got any questions, feel free, leave me a comment in the uh, in the comment section and I will happily answer them. I try to respond to all of my suggestions, uh, no matter what. So just if you've got any questions, let me know. And if you've got any ideas for another tutorial that you may all like, just let me know in the comment section and I will look into seeing if I can come up with my own design for it. Thank you, bye bye.